Hey, welcome to another Touch Designer tutorial. Today, we're going to be going over how to generate AI images using Stable Diffusion. We're able to do this using a custom component that I created in Touch Designer. Here's a couple of examples of images that I created using this. I also have a follow-up video where I show how to record videos using Stable Diffusion and then pipe them through a particle system and make it audio reactive like this. The custom component supports two forms of input. For the first, you can write any text that you want into this prompt, and the AI will generate an image based off of your description. And for the second, you can use a technique called image to image, where we can take any top in touch designer and provide that as the starting point. And then we can use our prompt to guide the AI on how to modify the image. For this component, we're actually using an API called Compute Renderer. The benefit of using an API is that normally it takes a computer with a pretty beefy GPU in order to render these images quickly. But because we're using Compute Renderer, we can actually generate a bunch of the images really quickly. And with Compute Renderer, we can generate these at a fraction of the cost of other services like Dolly, Midjourney, and Stable Diffusion's actual website because they're able to rent out consumer grade computers to run these services. I am making this project free and open source though, and you can take this compute render component and you can actually bring it into any of your projects as well. Also make sure that you copy over this TD async IO component into your project. This is what allows us to asynchronously generate these images at the same time. All right, let's go ahead and get this component set up so that you can use it in your projects. I'll have a link to compute render and this project in the description. I did a bunch of work to make sure that you don't actually have to install any Python libraries. All you need to do is just make an account on computerender.com, generate an API key, drop it in, and then you can use this in any of your projects. All right, enough overview. Let's go ahead and dive in and start making some images. This top section here is just for generating single images. So if you click on the compute render component here, you'll notice that there's a section for prompt. And we can put anything that we want in here. And right now, image to image is turned on. So you'll notice that this flower image in the far right looks very, very similar to this starting image that we're putting in as an input. And right now, the prompt is flower, art station, Monet, golden hour. And we can actually get a variation of this by changing the seed number here. And we can hit pulse, and it'll generate a new image. And then we can also turn off Im image to image. So now it's not using this base image as a starting point. So it's just going to go off the prompt. We can see what it looks like. Very cool. Another thing that's fun to do, I'm going to turn image to image back on. Let's try taking this background of the waves and use that, but still with the flower prompt. Hey, look at that. So what's really cool is if you look at this kind of comparison here, you'll see that like there's clouds in the top left, you still have kind of these dark regions. So it's really interesting to see how it'll generate based off of similar patterns and also the color palette. Okay, so let's reconnect this back and I'm going to show you this section below. So this is for generating multiple images at the same time. And what we can do here, if I change the prompt slightly, so this is waves, ocean sky, vibrant, art station, studio Ghibli, Claude Monet. Um, let's do something different, like outer space. And then let's go ahead and generate the images. And you'll notice all of them start to run asynchronously. And as those come in, we can take a look at the images. Very cool. And also right now I have this on image to image as well. So it's kind of, it's using this as a starting point. And so I can toggle off the image to image and that will get updated on all the other ones as well. 
So now if I toggle it again, all four of them will generate based off of that initial prompt. Whoa, these are crazy. Super cool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch this prompt back real quick. Regenerate. And I'm going to turn the... Oh, these are great also. Dang. Okay, and then I'm going to change this back to image to image. And the reason I'm doing this is because I actually just added in a couple extra helper examples. And what I want to do is have the same prompt so that we can compare the differences between them. Okay, so if I zoom out a little bit, it might look a little overwhelming, but I have a whole other example down here and another one that I just made as well. It's all the same component. And what you'll notice is that I have... I have a little comment up here that describes the differences between these. So this first set of multiple images that you can generate, all I've done here, every parameter here is exactly the same except for the seed. So we're able to get a slightly different output using the same iterations, guidance, and resolution. Okay, for this example down here, what I've done is the seed is actually the same between all of these, but what I've done is I've changed the number of iterations. And what I want to do is use this as a way of illustrating how these different parameters are working. So I'm going to turn off the background on this and go ahead and activate this one so we can see what the difference is and kind of compare them. So you'll notice I'm, I'm using the same prompt. I'm doing image to image as well. And you can see here in this component, we have an iteration of 2, 4, 9, and 16. Behind the scenes, what's happening is that the machine learning model is running more iterations to generate the images. It is a trade-off. So the higher the number of iterations, the longer it'll take the machine learning model to actually generate the image, and the lower, the faster. You can kind of see that we get a variation in the image where there can be more detail and things like that. And you'll hit a certain threshold as well. Like you might like the aesthetic of this. And in that case, you, it's great because the image gets generated super, super quickly at two iterations. Um, one thing that you'll notice, though, is that when the iterations are down to two, the image looks almost identical to the input image. And you'll actually see a lot more variation if we turn off image to image here. So let's go ahead and regenerate this set of images. And now you'll be able to see very clearly how much of an impact the iterations have. So you can see here, like we get way more detail in the kind of sky and waves. And the other thing that I've done here as well is notice that like I have the guidance linked and the seed linked. So now if, if I change, or sorry, I have the seed and the guidance bound. And so if I change the seed number here and then regenerate these, we'll just get a new variation of all of these with a different number of iterations. And I think this is a great way to just be able to test out the model. Okay, so the last one down here is essentially the same thing, except what we've done is, I'm gonna turn off, <laughs> I'm gonna turn off the background on this. We've done the same thing, except we've changed the guidance. So the guidance is how closely the machine learning model is gonna follow your prompt. And you can definitely overdo this as well. Same with all the other parameters. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what that variation is. I'm going to turn image to image on, generate the images. And you can see here it's it's pretty close to this first image here. And you know we between these two, you don't get that much of a change. But I think when you have um, image to image on, I don't think you need as high of a guidance for those. If we turn image to image off and generate the images, now you can kind of see, you do get a fair amount of variation. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful to see how these are, are connected together. And you can kind of go wild with this as well. These are just a couple of ways that I decided to link up these components together that I, I personally found helpful in order to experiment with the different parameters. And you can wire them up in other ways as well. For example, what I've really done here, if you... If you look at this, everything is pulling from this main component here. So if we change the resolution in this location, it's going to update everywhere. And when you bind a parameter in Touch Designer, what ends up happening is if I go to another component over here and I change the resolution maybe to like 720, it'll also update here as well. So now what we can do, we, can, we could regenerate our images at a new resolution. They're all linked up. And you'll see it actually changes it quite a bit. 
Um, it's pretty interesting to see how the new resolution modifies it. One thing to note is that the model was trained on images that were 512 by 512. So in general, you'll probably get better results by generating them at, at that resolution. But the model does uh, the model does allow you to generate a variation in size. And I also want to show you like you can put in parameters that uh, go out of the bounds. So what happens if I put in a resolution that's massive, right? If I run this, notice that it'll pop up with an error and you'll see like invalid parameter w. So the width is the width is too large. And I also output the error message here so that you can use that. Um, similarly, for example, if we have a invalid API key and I generate this, this might happen to you if you're first first running into this, you'll notice like status authorization error provided API was not recognized. Update this. Don't don't use my API key. I'm gonna I'm gonna delete this once I'm done recording this video. Um, please generate your own. That'd be awesome. Um, other helpful things. Um, oh, okay. You can also auto save all the images. So notice here, there's a folder path, and what you can do is uh, if I'm uh, here, I'm referencing the local location where the Touch Designer project is saved, and I have a folder named images. So I found that if I just hit the plus button, if I navigate to a folder, it doesn't automatically select the right file path for me. Like I need to tack on the slash folder path, like or dot slash, which is the current folder, and then put a slash to be inside that folder. And now if I generate an image, uh, what I've done is if we open this up, you'll notice that what I've done here is I've actually tacked in all the different parameters that I've used to generate the image uh, into the file name. And that way, hopefully, it'll be a lot easier for you to be able to regenerate these images. So that way, here at the beginning, I have the prompt tacked in. I have the seed number, the width and height, iterations, guidance, and all that good stuff. One last thing that I wanted to show you is a website called Lexica. And I think this can be super helpful in order to figure out how to do prompt engineering. Modifying your prompt can have a huge impact on the style that's generated. So you can tweak a lot of the parameters in the stable diffusion model, but it's really helpful to be able to tack in a couple different keywords to figure out what you want to generate. So what I've found is if I'm going for a specific style, like say I'm doing illustration, what I'll do is search for it and Lexica has tons and tons of examples of images that have been generated with Stable Diffusion. So if there's an aesthetic that you like, you can click on the image. And what it'll do is give you the prompt that was used, as well as the guidance, resolution, seed number, and the version of the Stable Diffusion model. OK, that's great. But before you copy some style, one huge point of contention is that artists who've posted their work online may have had their work included in these types of models without their consent. Now, Stability AI has actually stepped up and incorporated a artist opt-out request. And Spawning AI has created this website that allows artists to check if their artwork has been trained on. And artists can use this to opt out of the training data set for Stable Diffusion 3.0. And I'll put a link to this website as well in the description. OK, so being cognizant of the style that we are copying here, what you can do is take this prompt, copy it to your clipboard. And if we put our guidance around 7, we should get something fairly similar. And You can kind of see this aesthetic that's been created here. And this could be super fun to play around with image to image as well. So if we take this, we can pop this into our prompt. And um, maybe let's turn image to image off at first, but we can kind of see what variations that we get out of this. Very cool. So we get kind of a more of a hand-drawn feel. And then what about when we turn our image to image back on? Interesting. So maybe our guidance is, maybe our iterations are a little bit too high. We could turn our iterations down and maybe turn our guidance up a little bit. And let's see how that affects it to try and get more of a hand-drawn feel. Or maybe we want our guidance up even more.
I think I liked it lower. I think around like 2.5 and let's try our iterations a bit higher. Very cool. Well, hopefully this gives you a sense of things that you can play around with using this. And just as a reminder as well, like you don't need to use an image here. You could be rendering some crazy things in Touch Designer. You could, you know, you can put whatever prompt that you want in. And it will actually, one thing to note is that it will actually use the uh, resolution of the content that you provide it when you have image to image on. So here, notice that I'm setting the resolution to 512, 512. Uh, that way we can kind of keep it in a resolution that's helpful for the machine learning model. So if I, maybe if I turn monochrome off here and I zoom this in a little bit and we just get this kind of funky looking noise texture. And you can also have things animating and the second that you hit generate, it'll snag that specific frame. So we'll have this animating, and then right when I hit generate, it snags that current frame. Awesome. Cool. I hope you enjoyed this. And please let me know if you have any questions about using this component. I'd love to hear your feedback on this. Um, this is going to be free and open to the public. The API is paid for, but it's for a great cause. Pete, who's been working on the project, has been really, really focused on trying to take machine learning models and make them available and accessible to the public at very, very low cost. I'm a huge fan of the work that he's been doing. If you've enjoyed this tutorial and want to support me, the best way to do that is through my Patreon. There you'll get access to all the project files that I've ever created, as well as the tutorials, and you get access to a private Discord where you can ask me any questions. I'll put a link to that in the description. Thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.